Sit Down with the Superintendent, presented by GCHS TV. Join us as we welcome Greenup County Superintendent Tracy Marisi to our roundtable discussion hosted by GCHS students. Now, here are your hosts, Haley Lambert and Haley Glancy. Welcome to Sit Down with the Superintendent, presented by GCHS. I'm Haley Lambert. And I'm Haley Glancy. And I'm not Haley. I'm Mrs. Maracy. Well, welcome. How was your weekend? Good. Um, very, very busy with ball games, but good. You guys sent me some really great questions. I got the questions this morning, and I actually sent back a message to Mr. Collier to tell him that they were they were tough. They were good questions, though. So. All right, well, we'll just get into them then. Mm -hmm. So, what's a recent trend you think will have a major impact on the school districts in years to come? Um, a couple of um, things that come to mind. First of all, there's the trend of, um, of the vaping, and that's setting up a whole new issue with our students and protecting them from some of the products that get put in there. Um, so that is one issue that I think is a new trend that is going to have an impact on the way we have to do things. Um, on a positive note, I think a lot of the online availabilities that we have, the virtual experiences that kids can have, and eSports being an actual KHSAA sanctioned event is a, a pretty cool concept that I think is going to have a big impact on our kids. So, um, How did you develop such good leadership skills? You guys, that's the nicest question. It is. Um, I joked whenever I, I read this and I said I was a bossy kid. I was a really bossy kid. Um, but I, I joke about that. Honestly, I think my first role in leadership was being a good listener, trying to be a good kid for my parents. Yeah. Um, and listening to them, they both worked. They were blue collar workers. They both worked. And they would come home and talk about the things their boss did. And so you kind of learned what to not do in that situation. Um, so that was my first example. I also did a lot of 4-H as a child. So um, I would do 4-H camp. And uh, there were a lot of leadership opportunities for me throughout. And so that kind of, I think my childhood kind of set the precedent for me to do that. Hmm. Well, what is one thing you would like to leave behind as kind of like a legacy at the school district? Um, I'd really like to see some facility upgrades. I think that would be great. I don't necessarily need it to be my legacy or put my name on it. Uh, but, and I'm uh, working hard to work with some of our alumni to establish what's considered an alumni foundation. Some other schools have alumni foundations and it helps support initiatives in the district. Um, I know Russell has one and that's where they get a lot of funding to be able to do some of the, the neat things that they offer. Um, I would like to start with an alumni foundation that will get the ball rolling to refurbish our bleacher system at the high school um, football field. So I think that would be a really good start because those bleachers are pretty antiquated yeah. and can use, can use a little something. So, um, and then have it move into what our next initiative would be after that. So I've honestly reached out to a former alumni. I've reached out to Tom Clay, if anybody knows who that is um, from the fishing and gaming show. Um, and he's an alumni and he's in our Hall of Fame. So um, I've reached out to him and he's going to get with me next week and we're going to kind of start brainstorming some ideas. Mm, so that's awesome. I'd like to see that happen. And that would make funding a little, a little better for us. So, okay. Um, what is one way that you connect with the students and our community here in general? Well, you guys help me. You help me connect, so thank you. Um, I try to be available at all games as much as possible. I have a little bit of a, a rule that I give myself um, to try to attend at least one to two evening events per week just to make sure that I'm out meeting the parents and seeing that the facilities are going well, um, it's good to know I'm not above checking grades and making sure kids are really supposed to be playing. Um, so it kind of helps me keep um, perspective of how tired our administrators might be because they've been at a game all night and then they're expected to come in the next day. And the same thing for our kids. Yeah. So um, I really like to, um, to keep myself out there um, just so that people know I do care about beyond. My first priority obviously is safety of kids and academics, but the next area is extracurriculars. So. Okay. 
Um, what is one thing about this district that you're very proud of? You know, I have several because we've had such a turnaround and growth that's happened in our district um, over the past five years. So I have um, several things that I'm, just the growth that's happened and the attitude and the growth mindset. Probably my, my biggest, I'm really proud of our teachers and the staff who have embraced the technology that we now kind of lead the way in. Our state, you guys don't get to see it, but people from across the state watch us to see what we're doing next in technology. We're kind of leading the way in several areas, especially with the Google certification, the online Google classrooms. Um, as of last year, we had 132 um, Google certified teachers and that's kind of unheard of. So we've really been able to, to lead that. But then when I look at our FFA programs, our, um, our after school programs with our robotics, um, you know, a lot of our different areas, our student uh, organizations with um, student council, this show, we have a lot to be proud of with what our students are doing too. Um, would you say that the students here have a strong voice in our district? I think that you are developing one. My goal is to develop a way for you to do it the right way. Um, so you are developing a strong voice. I think it's grown throughout the years. And my, my goal is, is to hone that in and um, help you focus in on things that you can actually have an impact on. So that's kind of... Um, the purpose of the student council that I've developed and then my meeting with your high school student council and then also coming in and meeting with you guys every day so every Wednesday is just to give you that voice so I think it's growing it has potential is our district facing any challenges right now money do you have any money no okay. I do not <laughs> um, really our challenges I know other districts who have many more challenges than we do, so I'm going to be very grateful for our challenges. Um, you know, we, we obviously face an economic issue in our area. Um, you know, some of you that follow me saw that I posted the other day. I'm very concerned about the closing of the hospital. I'm clo the closing of the hospital impacts your ability to get health care quickly. Um, it also impacts some of your parents, which impacts you. You're going home to that stress. And then there are teachers um, who have and family members who are losing their jobs. So it does it does worry me the economic system in our area. We're struggling. You know we have a loss of a lot of revenue. Um, my goal is to keep teachers in the classroom and instructional supplies ready for you, and to not have to cut any services. So that's that's really my big focus right now. Um, how often would you say that parents, families, and the community affect the decisions that you have to make? Um, often. I'm pretty famous for giving out surveys. I really like to survey and see what's going on. Um, just general conversations, I try to keep those in the back of my head and remember what somebody has told me. Um, if I can address it, I will, if it's feasible and it's reasonable. So yes, um, I really do take it seriously when someone talks to me and, and gives me some input. That's part of the job, a leader listens, so I do that. Would you ever say that you feel like pressured into making like a certain decision just because of other people's opinions um, on something? Yes, absolutely. There's always that pressure to please mm -hmm. and you know, do well for others. And I really like to be the nice person yeah. and say, sure, let's okay. add that multi-million dollar <laughs> tennis court out back. It'll be fine. Um, however, I also have to think about when I make a decision, my first question is, how does it impact students? How does it impact kids? Because that's my job. Mm -hmm. And if it's going to help a kid, it helps just sway me even more. If it is not going to have an impact and it's only going to benefit adults, that's when I take a step back because mm -hmm. that's not what my job is. My job is for you guys first. So. Um, what kind of impact has the use of technology had on student achievement in this district? Well, it's, it's offered this class, obviously, yeah. um, which is impacting you in several ways with the idea of um, speaking, listening, writing, journalism. Um, the impact that you're able to make with the math in Mr. Collier's class where that he does the online study sessions 
we are gradually seeing student growth. Um, in the elementary and middle school, we actually have a, a new screener system. I'm sure you guys remember taking MAP or STAR. They take something similar to your access that you take. Um, and that is now called Exact Path. They take the test, and whenever they finish their test, it gives them a pathway of things to practice based on their level. So it gives them a little self-assigned homework. So it's kind of nice. That's really, that's helping some growth as well. Um, speaking of technology, I know we have like some online classes already, but mm -hmm. um, through like our district, do we have any program that is like full online, like from home? Uh, we do have a program for students who have been at home school and are wanting to return. We are revamping that program a little bit um, and not taking any new enrollment. Um, the goal is maybe next year to have a whole new look at that. Um, some students um, have been away from school and they're, they come back to school. So we have some programs to them edge back in to the regular routine of going to classes and getting a couple of credits. Um, and then I know several of our teachers pretty much teach their entire class online, including dual credit. You know, if you're going to go to college, you definitely want to get started in some of our um, dual credit classes or it is an experience. So. Um, <coughs> do you have any questions like this? want to know white over there went blue green <laughs> yellow uh, I'm not sure okay why it is. I thought that was a reasonable question because it was yeah. hard to keep a straight face oh, and I, I guess I kind of need to know if there's gonna be like a blooper outtake from this <laughs> this whole thing but um, actually, a little about what, um extra activities you're in and <laughs> anything you do beyond school well I don't do that much. I know Haley does. Oh, she's going to do volleyball. Volleyball, yeah. okay. Yeah. My daughter plays volleyball. Loves the sport, and I'm so oh, happy about it. So happy about it. I played when I was in high school. Oh, so, um, three guesses what? Are you guessing? No, I'm guessing. You guess me. What do you think? Oh, that you played. Okay, okay. <laughs> three guesses. Um, think. I'm really sure. Libero. I was. Yeah. The back line setter. <laughs> so, um, what do you play? Um... Well, this past year I passed, but um, I usually am middle blocker. Middle blocker? Mm -hmm. So have you gotten some blocks? Mm, a couple, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> That's my favorite thing to see somebody get a block. So, okay, so you do volleyball, anything else? Mm, that's about it. Favorite class? I work, so. Oh, where do you work? I need to know where I can get my discounts. Where hot diggity dog. Hot diggity dog. <laughs> yeah. She sells uh, She sells hot dogs. And um, are any sales coming up, two for a dollar for the superintendent? We got a deal, five fifty for hot dog, a drink, and fries. Lunch. Lunch mm -hmm. plans. Okay. So do you work a second job, work a job, or do anything? No. Not right now. I'm do waiting until I can drive. Okay. Do you do any chores at home? Please say yes. yes Just lie to yes, me. I say do. yes, I do chores at home. Dishes? Yeah, laundry. Laundry. There yeah. we go. Guys, you've got to earn your way. If you're laying on the couch, get up. Okay? Get up. You got it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> See, I do this preaching to my children every day, and then they ignore me because guess what? They have an earbuds, and they don't Air hear voice. anything. Yeah. So Same I finally thing. have a captive audience, and I'm just going to make everybody listen to me. All right, so favorite class that you have here at Greenup County High School, and you can't say this one. Um, I'd say probably my anatomy class. Okay, uh, is that Miss Keens or yeah, Miss Pence? Miss Keens. Yeah. Miss Keens. Are you doing any of the Marshall University scores competition? No, no. Okay, no. well, we're going to fix that. Okay. Okay, you're going to go talk to Miss Keens, and she is going to help get you signed up for some okay. Marshall University scores. Because all of her students, whenever her and Miss Pence send them, they usually do very well. And it'll give you a chance to get on a college campus. So those of you that are out there um, watching, think about getting signed up for that. And I'd like this class to actually submit some stuff. Has Mr. Collier talked to you guys about that? A little bit, yeah. yeah. Okay, so get some stuff submitted. Favorite class that's um, not after school or... Probably in my fourth period, I have um, multimedia for with Mr. Sturgill. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. We just make like dumb videos in there and stuff. And okay. 
<laughs> so you could start showing them on the show. I mean, I guess. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's actually one of the competitions on scores um, is make create your own Snapchat video. Oh, really? Where that you have to like create a storyline with Snapchat. But they bring you in a room and you have so much time to do it right there in front of them. Mm. So it's those kind of competitions off the cuff. So I think you guys, you guys can do that. You do Snapchat, right? No? Oh, I Snapchat every okay. day. Okay, yeah. all right, there you go. You can do that. All right. Well, if you guys have an idea for the show or a question you would like to present to the panel or Ms. Moracy, email Mr. Collier, and the address is at the bottom of the screen. Thanks for having me, guys. That will do it for this week's show. Join us next week with another sit down with Ms. Moracy right here on GCHS TV. For the entire GCHS TV crew and Ms. Moracy, I'm Haley Glancy. And I'm Haley Lambert. Thank you for watching and have a great afternoon.